musings and other nonsense, whimsical stories, poems, and songs for children. Written and read by Peter G. Reynolds. That's me. Your support allows us to bring you quality stories each week. Please visit buymeacoffee.com slash musings to donate and help cover our production costs. This episode is called A Town Called Nook. In the town I call home, every house is a book. Some fiction, some fact, it's a place we call nook. Now you may think it's strange that we all live in tomes, but it's normal for us. These books are our homes. There are books on all subjects, from spaceships to bugs, including some books full of kisses and hugs. Yuck. We live on a street that's called Bottom Shelf. Our neighbor is a book that helps you help yourself. Our home's full of numbers for any occasion. My toys are a fraction and quadratic equation. And though we had answers, one question remained. Why was I lonely? Could that be explained? I asked mother, who said, you should study more. I asked father, who said, leave home and explore. His advice was quite simple. This town's full of wonders. There's much more to life than playing with numbers. So I packed my bag and walked into town. Dad wore a big smile. Mom wore a big frown. It's not safe, she shouted. All that silly fiction. If you read too much, you'll get an addiction. I passed many books I had not seen before. Middle grade readers and board books galore. Hello, called a woman, her voice filled with glee. Why don't you come in and solve this mystery? But I heeded Mom's warning as I explored Nook and avoided anything made up in a book. One house felt creepy, though I didn't know why. I heard a loud scream and I quickly walked by. One book was thick with scholarly prose. The owner just scoffed and turned up his nose. I got lost for a while but that was just fine, surrounded by textbooks and even true crime. But something was missing from all of this writing. I needed a book that was just more exciting. Then I met a girl, her eyes filled with tears. She was older than I, but just by two years. Her mother had told her, explore with conviction, that there's more to life than narrative fiction. But where to begin? Fiction's all that she knew. Other books were confusing. What was she to do? So I held her hand and said, I'll be your guide. A memoir was near and we both went inside. We saw books on physics and geography, sweet tasting cookbooks and quaint history. Then one day she asked if I'd like to share her true love of fiction. She'd help guide me there. My first thought was, no, it filled me with fear. My mom's warning rang very loud in my ear. But when she was with me, I didn't feel tense. So I tried out some fiction. First thrillers, then suspense. Books big as mansions, or small as a hovel. I loved all of them. I thought them quite novel. The weeks went by, our friendship grew stronger. And stories with kisses? I didn't mind any longer. So then we decided... Together we'll stay, but there was just one thing that stood in our way. It was our parents. How might they react? Her world was a fiction, while mine was a fact. But we had a solution that was great indeed. We debated for hours, and then they agreed. So we built a house with no literary restriction. Two families joined in a home of science fiction. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please check out my picture book, Lost Hallway, now available on Amazon. It's a magical tale of a young boy who finds a world that contains all lost things. You can learn more at storiesbypeter.com. See you next time.